Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Howe, Rockstar Realtor. I've got a video for you if you want to know about the West Coast water shortage and Lake Mead and what to do about it. I got some answers and that's just for you on the other side. Thanks for sticking around on the other side. I'm Rob Howe, Rockstar Realtor. That makes me the realtor and you the rock star. And today I have some, uh, just a ton of information that I have been gathering about what's happening with Lake Mead, the water shortage, the drought on the West Coast period. Um, it's a number of interlocking issues and I want to let you know everything that's on my mind about it. Um, some of this I will have links in my description so you can read articles and a couple of uh, important pieces of information. Before I start though, I'd like you to sign up for my channel. That's right, press subscribe. I This channel is going to grow and grow and grow. I want you to be here for the whole thing. Um, I have a lot to offer. I have a lot to talk about. And it's not always just going to be about real estate like today, even though it's interlocked with real estate. I get this question so often about what is happening. What do we do if there's no water? Uh, that is a big deal. And I and, and I always I kind of had ha have had the same standard answer. If my clients, uh, if anybody's watching this that has been a client uh, and asked me that question, many have. Um, uh, my standard answer has been because I've been here all my life. Uh, I have seen the lake be as, you know, as robust as possible, what they call full pool. Well, that was quite some time ago back in the 80s, uh, back when I took a you know school trip to that uh, to the lake, to Hoover Dam to see it overflowing. Um, but what I always say is that, you know, if there's enough people that are dealing with the same problem, eventually that problem gets sorted out, especially if it's a absolute need like water. Now, I'm gonna go over what I think are some of the major trouble spots. I think there is definitely short-term comfort um, overall. I, this is not going to happen necessarily overnight. The problem that has existed has taken 22 years of drought to create our current problem which is, yeah, it's serious. There's no doubt about it. It's serious for the entire West Coast. It's not just for Nevada or Las Vegas. People think, oh, just, you know, that's, it's the desert here. So clearly, you know, we're just sucking up all the water here. Too many people moving here. Uh, you know, I see it all the time when, whenever there's something about real estate on social media, people are always saying, why are we allowing people to continue to move here? Uh, why do the politicians continue to allow these projects to get built? You know, and there is some truth to that thought, especially when you're talking about any projects that are going to take up a lot of water. Right now, we are 180 feet below full pool is what they call it at Lake Mead. Okay. The Colorado River um, is how Lake Mead gets replenished. Uh, that, that Colorado River is... Uh, is, uh, you know, a lot of that is melt from uh, up in the Rockies. Um, and that's where that water builds up, comes down the river and actually stops first at Lake Powell. Lake Powell gets their drink first and then it goes down. And these are the two largest man-made lakes. And this is what I want to make a big point about. These are man-made lakes. These lakes were not just here uh, on their own. Okay, the river clearly was, but the lakes were not. So I'm gonna make a big point about what that means to me. And those man-made lakes needed from the very beginning to be managed properly because of the idea that, you know, looking ahead, we might have a drought. Now, would anybody have been able to see this kind of drought coming? I don't know. I don't know the history. That's a deeper investigation into what's happened over centuries. Um, and some of this stuff, you know, is, is just, there is going to be some natural things that happen regardless of human activity. Life, uh, finds a way. 
but we do have man-made lakes that weren't supposed to be there. So they have to be managed, okay, especially through drought. You know, personally, I wasn't feeling that concerned about our water here until I started seeing Lake uh, Powell having such an issue. They are down 160 feet from full pole as well, 40 feet in the last two years. That's a big drop for them because they're first in line to get the water. So that means Lake Powell has to start seeing some positivity before Lake Mead can see some positivity in my mind. This is something that, look, I don't know if that's even right, but in my mind, it would just make sense. You think about it, you know, if a cup has to get full here first, and then the water has to come down and fill this cup second, well, that first cup gets its first, gets the first drink. And until that one is full, the second one isn't gonna get full. I think that makes sense. So I'm, I didn't look up the exact capacity where uh, Lake Powell is, but I know that Lake Mead is at 30% capacity. I flew over Lake Mead recently and it's still a massive body of water. It's still massive, but it's only at 30%. So we definitely have some work to do. And, um, you know, it's interesting because there's, you know, there's been all this talk about it because we're getting all these relics, of course, the dead bodies that we, we've been finding in barrels. Um, and I've got a friend who started, uh, um, I believe, what was it? Uh, what's it called? Nevada Corpse Water? Or, oh, I'm going to put the link in the description, um, but it's it's she's selling uh, Lake Mead Corpse Water, I believe, uh, something like that. <laughs> and uh, it's gotten her a ton of international, uh, um, you know, attention for her little bottles of water that she's selling from Lake Mead. So those dead bodies really made a big impact. And then they started showing all of the relics that were there that are being found, like um, the, the, uh, the, the boats that are sticking out of the ground and boats that are now seeing in the shallow, shallow water, all these sunken boats. Because, I mean, it's a rec recreation area, and let's be honest, people go out there and drink and then, you know, smash up a boat or do something dumb, and next thing you know, they got their boat in the water, and, uh, you know, they're not having a good time. So, through the years, there's been a number of those boats, and they're all getting, you know, anything closer to the shoreline has been getting exposed, which is quite a trip. But this severe drought is on the West Coast in total. It's really encompassing the entire West Coast. I'm gonna get to the management side of things and I want to actually bring you some numbers that I think are very important to understand here when it comes to you know where to put the blame and when it comes to the management of this water, what can be done. There are studies as far as where the water in Las Vegas and in Nevada is getting used the most and it's not from the indoor use. The indoor use, in other words, residential use, is getting used, we use it, and then actually they send all that water back to Lake Mead. They send it through a treatment uh, system, filtration, whatnot, and there's a number of ways that gets treated. I won't get into it, but um, some of it, they do this natural treatment, um, which is very cool, but they send it back to Lake Mead. Unfortunately, on the way, some of that, that there is some evaporation. So not every bit of indoor use water gets put back there. And then there's the commercial use water. And that's where we're using up a lot of our water because Nevadans are conserving. There is an effort for people to conserve water in Nevada. But one of the largest users of that water, that commercial water, as they say, is a place called Lake Las Vegas. Lake Las Vegas is basically right next to Lake Mead. It's one of the furthest communities out there. I think it is the most farthest community out there before you're into the uh, Lake Mead recreational area. Um, and they are using a massive amount of water to replenish their little lake there. They have a lake, um, another man-made lake as part of a community. And that uses a ton of water. What do you call it though? acre feet of water that's what they call it they're using a bunch and a lot of these man-made lakes throughout the city are using a bunch so a lot of that is happening a lot of the water is going there i don't think personally we should be seeing any more of these projects be allowed any more of these lakes that are being put into these communities now they're beautiful 
But you know what? Let's make the ones that are there. Let's make sure we can keep those going and not add any more. What do you say? I think that's a great idea. I'm actually in Desert Shores right now. Of course, as you saw in the beginning of the video. And I want to see this continue because it's beautiful and it would ruin things here to not be able to have that, of course. But it is secondary in, in what we need as far as drinking water, right? We need our drinking water first. So we need to be able to manage these things. And manage it, management, probably one place, don't allow more of these projects to come up. Additionally, golf courses and a lot of the outdoor area that has a lot of grass around Las Vegas and in Nevada, that uses up a absolute boatload of water, um, many, many boatloads of water. So these are projects that I think should be curtailed. It would be smart to reduce those um, projects. Now I'm gonna talk about the final thing of what I think is extremely important when it comes to the understanding of the management of the water in the on the West Coast and especially when it comes to, you know, Las Vegas, a desert. I'm gonna break it down to you how much water gets allotted. What are the water allotments from the Colorado River? Well, California gets 27%. California, they get 27%. You're thinking to yourself, California, they got a big ocean right next to them. What's going on there? Well, they have a lot of agriculture. And at the time that these um, agreements were made, California was definitely the more populated area. Vegas was much smaller and really people were not envisioning a place in the desert like Vegas getting as big as it has. Um, and I'm gonna tell you like, as we go down the list, it might be shocking to know this, but 23% goes to Colorado. Okay, it's the Colorado River. They should probably hit a pretty good portion of it. I'm just saying, okay. Arizona gets 17%. They get 17% over there in Arizona. Arizona, uh, another dry desert area. You know, they, they do need, uh, that's why they put Lake Powell there. Um, but we have to manage this better. I have an idea, uh, but it's gonna take, eh, it's gonna take a lot. Utah gets 11%. Um, and they haven't even, from what I understand, Utah hasn't even been using all of their water allotment and now they want to. So that's a thing. 9% goes to Mexico. Okay, because the Colorado goes through to Mexico. So clearly they should have something going there. Um, Wyoming gets 6%. Wyoming gets 6%. New Mexico gets 5%. Another dry, arid area in a lot of the parts of that state. Wyoming has some dryness too. 2%. Nevada gets 2%. So let me get this straight, folks. You got Lake Mead in Nevada. You got the Colorado River partially in Nevada. You got Hoover Dam that's in Nevada. This is where some of this water gets allocated from. And we get 2%. Well, I think that's a bit of a raw deal. Southern Nevada Water Authority has to manage this water in, in a much larger way, in my opinion, than other states. We have a much... Uh, bigger responsibility than some of these other states do, even though they get a much, much more water than we do. And it breaks down to something like this in acre feet. California gets the most and they get four and a half million acre feet, nearly four and a half million. I think it's 4.4 .4 and change. Um, and we get 300,000 acre feet. Okay. In Nevada. Uh, something seems a little unfair. I think it's time, and here's the problem. I think it's time for California to start pumping some of that water out of the, and desalinating and pumping it out of their uh, their own backyard there. They've got the, they've got the ocean there. Now, it's be a big project. That's the problem in California. I think there's a lot of red tape, and they have big projects that they have been trying to get off the ground for many years that they haven't been able to do because of tons of red tape, it's over budget, all these problems. So now you're gonna throw on the table, hey, California, we need you to start producing more of your own water so that these other areas that are much more dry and don't have the accessibility that you have um, can, can uh, survive. Well, that's my thought at least. Tell me what you think 
I'd sure like to hear what you think. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. And I hope dearly that in time, this problem is something that we're all working on to get solved and all asking the right people to manage things as it should be managed so that we can have what we need in this state and all around the West Coast. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel and I hope you enjoyed what I had to say today. I certainly enjoyed giving it to you. If you have something more to add, there's a lot to know. I'd like to know what I missed that you would have liked me to talk about on when it comes to the water shortage out here in Nevada and on the West Coast. You know how to find a realtor. Contact me at this number anytime. In the meantime, have a great day, everybody. And I'll see you on the next one. Hasta la vista.